as the rent comes in from the investment, I get to keep the rent too. So in the background, there's a, a property that's going up in value. And while that's going up in value for a potential future sale or potential gain, then I'm getting a monthly amount. Our lesson on the board today is going to be addressing real estate. Uh, it's funny that being in the financial industry since 2005, it's, it's, it's almost like an interesting study of human behavior to just watch how people uh, argue about their strong opinions. And it's okay to have an opinion. There's nothing wrong with having an opinion on how something works or something that's worked for you, but it's, it's, it's just interesting to watch, like for example, you get guys that uh, do investments, let's say, and they're big on uh, mutual funds or active managed accounts or something, but the, it's something to do with like the traditional financial industry and they like almost like evangelically go out and, and it's like this is the only way. If you don't have, you know, this type of account with this type of fee and this type of performance and blah, 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 working with this type of advisor, you're wrong. And then you get the, this side over here that's real estate guys. You know, real estate investors, real estate licensed guys, people that work for certain companies that it's like if you can't put a fence around it, it's not an investment. You know, all these, uh, the market is just a hoax. It's made up. It's not even real. Uh, if I can't, you know, hold it in my hand, scoop the whatever, scoop the dirt, move it around, uh, it's not real. It's not a real investment. And there really are people that think that, like, mutual funds are just like not even real that they're just like you're just throwing your money at something and then there's a number that updates on the computer screen okay so I'm not of the opinion of either I'm of the opinion that you can have your own opinion and you can believe what you want to believe and my job is to not convince anybody to change their mind uh, it's to educate people and help them make the decision that they feel is best for them and so I do get the question all the time of, well, what about, you know, what do you think about investing in real estate? I think people should try a lot of things. Uh, but there are obviously some things that are illegal to do, uh, so we want to avoid those because nobody wants to go, go to jail. Okay? But let's just talk about some basics of, uh, of real estate. Uh, I've been talking to some of my uh, real estate friends, some investors that I know, people I've worked with in the past. Um, and we're going to start uh, having some guests and we'll, and we'll bring you some more details uh, on some real estate stuff in the future. But let's just talk about the basics. The basics of real estate. Okay. So a couple of, a couple of different uh, classifications, first of all, and then a couple of details. So first of all, you've got uh, commercial real estate. Uh, commercial real estate is going to be uh, let's say like this building that I'm in. I decide that uh, I want to buy a building, okay, or I want to buy a warehouse, or I want to buy, uh, you know, something where other people are going to come and lease the space from me uh, to, to have some sort of business dealing uh, typically. But then that's also something that you can do with land. So you have farmers. Uh, I actually have a client about 30 miles south of here that owns uh, quite a bit of land and leases out that land to other farmers to use to grow things on, to you know, raise their animals, etc. Uh, and so that's going to be commercial property. Okay? The other is going to be uh, residential. Okay? Residential, kind of the same approach, uh, but ke again, keeping things very basic, is residential is going to be uh, a piece of property that has a, a dwelling on it, and that could be uh, inside of residential. There could be uh, multi, 
uh, multi-unit, which is going to be like an apartment complex or, or condominiums or whatever. Uh, and then there's the single, uh, the single family. And so the single family, but the whole idea, whether, whether on the commercial side it's land uh, or a building or an office or something like that, um, <clears throat> the, the, the concept is, is, is the same. Is that I purchase the, the, the property or I own the real estate and uh, if I'm doing it from an investment point of view, uh, the idea is to lease it out to other people and make money on it. So, for example, uh, on the single family side, I purchase a property, not to live in, but purchase the property, create a rental agreement, uh, I own the property, they pay me rent, and my hope as the investor is that whatever I'm paying for it every month and the tax deductions I get from having it and the property taxes and the homeowner's insurance uh, and everything that I'm coming out ahead or that I have positive cash flow. The, the biggest benefit, uh, in my opinion, when it comes to real estate is going to be that I've got this building, this dwelling, this land, this whatever I've got that has an initial value on this side uh, that I purchase it for. So let's say it's a piece of property that I purchase for $400,000. Okay, future lessons we'll be talking about down payments and qualifying and interest rates and all of that stuff. But I buy it for $400,000. I'm leasing it out and then on the other side uh, in the future, so if this is now, you know, this is year one, and then we go to the future, it wouldn't look like that if that's how our graph is going to be. It would, my hope is that it's going to do something like that. That I buy it for 400, but then say I hold it for five or I hold it for 10 years, uh, that, the, that the future the future value of this property uh, goes up. Let's say I hold it for, you know, 20 years and it gets to the point where it's worth a million dollars. Now, in the traditional financial world, is that's kind of what, what happens is we, is we allow the interest or the compound interest to grow our investment but then it all stays inside of the investment. Where with real estate, it's kind of and can be if it's done right and it makes sense. Uh, and again, we're just talking about how it works, why people do it. I'm not telling you to go do this. I'm not recommending, hey, you should go buy real estate. It's, it's, again, the Impact School of Money is to not give recommendations. It's to educate on what it is, how it works, why people would want to do it so that it starts that ball rolling uh, of understanding it a little bit better, okay? So, the, the real estate, a lot of people will say that real estate is one of those investments that's kind of, you can have your cake and eat it too, uh, kind of uh, investments. And I'd really love to see the history on who made up that little phrase, you can have your cake and eat it too, where, isn't that the point, I guess, of having cake? Is, so you can eat it? I don't know. Anyway, so... <clears throat> Where in real estate, what's unique may be similar to uh, investing in stocks that have a dividend that pays out, is that I invest my initial 400, or I, it's, it's worth 400,000. I now own a piece of property that's worth 400,000. Depending on the type of financing I do, maybe I just have the cash, or maybe I get a mortgage. Typically, if, if uh, I have the cash, then I just paid the 400000 up front. And as the rent comes in, as the rent comes in from the investment, I get to keep the rent too. So in the background, there's a, a property that's going up in value. And while that's going up in value for a potential future sale or potential gain, then 
I'm getting a monthly amount as well. And there's a whole bunch of things that go into it and management and getting the right renters in there, et cetera, et cetera. But we're just talking, you know, uh, generalities here. And so I'm, I'm getting the rent. And so if I, if I have to finance it, uh, then I'm financing it over time. But my payment typically... Uh, when we get into the commercial side, it gets really interesting with the types of, of loans that are available. But on the residential side, uh, most of the time people are getting some sort of fixed, uh, fixed rate loan. So if I get a fixed rate loan and I have a fixed interest rate, how much of my payment is going to change? Let's say I get a 30-year fixed. Uh, is my payment going to change in 30 years? No. But, question, is the rent going to change over the next 30 years? Yeah, if, hypothetically, this is what our real estate value is doing as people are purchasing homes that used to be 400000 now that same home, five years later, is 450000 and then five years later, it's 500000 et cetera, et cetera. As the payment with the market goes up, if someone were to purchase the home, it would just make sense that the rent on that same property would also go up, wouldn't it? And so that's why most people have rental agreements that are one year. Maybe, I've heard of a few that are two, a little bit longer term uh, leases, but for the most part, it's going to be about a year. Why? Because the market's going to adjust in a year. Now that could go the other way as well, where we might have to adjust our, our rent down. That's why having some extra cash and uh, making sure that we're, we're looking at the whole plan overall, not throwing everything we got into this where we have absolutely zero liquidity, right? But uh, as, those, as the market goes up, if I'm the investor here, I can charge more rent as it compares to other rents and as long you know, as it's reasonable and someone's willing to pay for it uh, and, and wants to live in the property and I have enough to fix it up, a new carpet, new paint, et cetera, um, then I'm making more and more and more every month on it, but my mortgage payment is the same, but then the value is going up as well. And so there's multiple opportunities uh, to make, to make a, a, a very decent profit on real estate, and that's why people do it, is they have an appreciating asset, uh, that if it's not their primary residence, it actually could be considered an asset and an investment where a lot of people, because they hear real estate is a way of investing, they think their primary residence uh, is an investment. Well, you got to live somewhere, and so if you sell it be, to, to get gains from it, now, well, now you don't have anywhere to live, so you got to buy something, and there's a whole argument around that. But, but the, the lesson on the board today was to talk about uh, just the basics of real estate. Where can I do it? Uh, why people do it? And then uh, in, in other lessons, we'll, we'll talk about uh, just a few details of the things that I know and have seen clients do or uh, been in the background introducing them to real estate investors and watching these, these things happen. Uh, I personally, with the licenses I hold, don't uh, help people invest in real estate, uh, but I do know the people that do know how to do it uh, and, and, and want to help, help them uh, do what they want to do. They ask me, hey, what do you think about investing in real estate? I say, well, it's not something that I do, but I have a friend, right, that, that does do it, that could teach you a little bit a little bit more. So those are the basics, the basics of investing uh, in real estate. Hope that you have a fantastic day, fantastic week, and bring somebody with you to class next time. See ya. Mm -hmm.